Today I'd like to go through and show a debugging session that I went through when writing some code that features any and all. And we'll see how using graphical uh, checks on your work as you go makes it easy to find out that such errors exist. What I'm doing in this code is I'm going to be flipping some coins. First I'm going to flip 10,000 coins and just look to see the results like you see here in number one. Then I'm going to go through and do the same thing for two coins, three coins, all the way up to I co coins. And what I'm going to do is for each of those trials I'm going to check to see did any of the coins equal one or heads. And any will tell me that. So you can see here that we got any for the first four but then there weren't any heads in the fifth trial or the sixth or the eighth. Okay, so uh, that's how any would work. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the same coin flips about all. And you can see we did not get all heads for the first time. Then we didn't for the second or third. And finally we did for the fourth. And we do that 10,000 times for the end trials. Let's look at the code that does this. In code, I'm going to say this individual trial is going to be a random set of numbers, i by n. And if it's greater than 0 0.5, then it's true. So that should give us a fair coin tip flip. Then I'm going to look at that big matrix of trials and just say all and all of trial and it will go down the columns and do that for me. And the same with any. Since I want to find out how many of these trials were true, I'm going to just do it all in one step. I'm going to sum up that vector that comes out. And then we can simply just plot this and take a look at the results. When I do this, this doesn't quite make sense. It mostly does from 2 on to 10 coins because as you get more and more coins, the chances of getting 10 all heads goes down significantly, whereas the chance of them of any of them being true goes up incredibly. But notice that for one coin, the, the results just don't seem to make sense. There's a sharp discontinuity there. Let's try and figure out what's going on. If we come here, I'm going to put a breakpoint right there where we're calculating the all and trial. Let's run it again. And let's look at trial, make sure that's what we expect. It's 1 through 10,000. And it does look random, so that seems to be OK. Let's come in here and make sure all trial looks right. And all is 0. Well, that can't be because some of those are ones and so we would expect like the fifth one to be true. So what's going on here? Well, all is by default going to work down the columns as I would mentioned earlier. However, if you give it just a vector then it's automatically just going to take the all of the vector because it wouldn't make much sense to do the columns when you've got a, ve uh, a simple vector like that. So what you're going to need to do is come in here and say, well, when I do this, I actually want you to work on the first dimension. Do the all along the first dimension. And when we come here to the command window, now we get the vector that we expected. And then when we do the sum, Now we get 4990, a much more reasonable number. That's going to hold true for the second set here. 
And if we run this again, now it's more continuous and it looks like what we expect. So this is a tricky little syntax error that we need to figure out because MATLAB was assuming that you wanted to do all or any of a vector in that way, but that's not exactly true in this one case. So it's good to make sure that you specify which dimension if you know you're going to have a degenerate case where there's a vector. You'll see that a lot of functions in MATLAB like all, any, sum, and so on will accept that second input to tell you which direction you want to work. One for down a column and two for across the rows.